everyone this is constance from mysterious galaxy tonight we have a panel of graphic novels which is just ridiculously awesome because i know myself as well as other booksellers at mysterious galaxy and all of our readers we just love and appreciate the awesomeness that is a graphic novel so i am very very, very excited for tonight's panel and our ringleader for tonight is going to be shannon waters is that how you correctly say it sorry i should have checked with you awesome and she to me she is right below me but she is going to be our fearless leader for today and uh you may be familiar with her work she co-wrote lumberjanes which i know many of you are familiar with she is going to introduce everyone else so i will not take that away but before i disappear and pass things off to her just a little house rules for everyone as many of you know our chat section is to the right hand side if you have a question Make sure you ask questions, you have them at your mercy. And that's the best part of the event is getting to ask questions and poke their brains about everything. So if you have a question, write down below where it says ask a question, that is where you can click and submit your questions. And then of course, the best way to promote these amazing stories and the best way to get more graphic novels is to go and buy them. So if you click the purchase book button right down below, that will take you to a link where you can purchase the books. I am going to go ahead and pass it off to Shannon, but I will see you guys at the end of the event. Have a good event! Hi everyone! Welcome! So excited to have uh, this lovely virtual event and to be joined by these wonderful people from across the globe uh, to talk about graphic novels and, and writing graphic novels for kids and, and making funny, delightful books uh, in our, in our uh, very interesting times. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do a quick uh, intro of everybody. I'm sure if you're here, you are familiar with them, but uh, they are all wonderful. The uh, first, Ari North, uh, is the author and illustrator of The Incredible Always Human. I love that book, way to go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And uh, uh, Laura uh, uh, Knetzger is uh, an artist and a writer. Uh, she was formerly a storyboard artist for Adventure Time um, and is behind the incredible uh, graphic novel series, Bug Boys. Uh, I also love that book. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Everybody's killing it. Um, and finally, we have uh, Mark Tatuli, who is uh, an acclaimed uh, syndicated cartoonist and uh, is going to be talking about his newest uh, book, The Big Break. Uh, so welcome everybody. Um, to start this off, I would love Thank you. to hear uh, each of you talk a little bit about your, about your latest project and um, you know, uh, just telling everybody a little bit about what it's about and uh, and uh, familiarizing them slightly with your work. We'll start with Ari. Okay. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go into. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I did this to myself, I guess. <laughs> um, should be better at this by now. Um, so, Always Human is um, an optimistic character-driven science fiction um, set in a future where people use technology to modify pretty much everything about themselves, um, used to sort of affect bodies for health, for education, for fashion. People might choose a new eye color the same way you choose a new hat. Um, the main character in this story, Sonati, she notices a stranger and uh, who is very visibly not using this modding technology and. She gets curious and her curiosity turns into a crush, which turns into a conversation. She discovers that the stranger can't actually use mods. And what follows is these two characters getting to know each other, um, forming a relationship, and we learn about the ways they interact with the technology around them. Um, yeah, that feels like it should end properly, but I'm just... <laughs> oh, I off the yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> if I was unfamiliar with the book and I heard that sales pitch, I would, I would be all about it. Thank you. <laughs> it's a beautiful idea, a beautiful concept. Um, all right, Laura, tell us about the Bug Boys and okay. Bug Boys' newest adventure. Yeah, so Bug Boys is an episodic comic series I started self-publishing almost 10 years ago. Um, 
Random House Graphic has been kind enough to collect and republish it. And then Volume 2 comes out uh, February 9th, which collects a bunch of stories I made over like the last five years or so. Um, anyway, Bug Boys is about two little dudes, they're best friends, they're Beatles, and they have strange adventures in the woods sometimes, and sometimes they just stay home and talk about stuff. And it's just about, it's kind of, I'm, it's part, one of my goals to have it be kind of about everything. So sometimes there's high adventure and sometimes there's just like talking about your favorite kind of s'more. I think that's kind of the perfect blend. That's what you really, I, I think truly what you want entertainment is uh, the assurance that, that stuff doesn't always have to happen all the time. That the, the, yeah. the not happening is very beautiful as well. Um, yeah, you get it. Get it? It's like my favorite kind you of get it. In Japan, um, it's, there's a term for it, and I'm trying to remember uh, the exact term, but it's, it's healing is, is, is what the, the word kind of translates to. And it's, it's entertainment that's meant to uh, be about those like fill in the blank, or like those, those moments between, right? Where it's just- Yeah, like, the, the downtime. The downtime. Yeah, uh, between adventures. I think it's a very, I think it's a very special and beautiful uh, time to be exploring. So, uh, check out Bug Boys. It's great. <laughs> Mark, tell us a little bit about your latest project. The Big Break. It has the uh, inglorious honor of having been uh, released on March 20th, right in the middle of the pandemic Whoa. in 2020. And so, I, you know, it was in bookstores that were closed. But um, it's a story, it's actually my second graphic novel. Can you guys all hear me okay? Okay, uh, it's my second graphic novel based loosely on my life. The other one, Short and Skinny, was uh, my life uh, for, from the summer of 1977, the year Star Wars came out. This is based on a relationship that I had with another guy. And we were, um, we were just best friends and he grew up a little faster than I did. And he started, I was still playing toys and, you know, still being like uh, a little kid, I guess you could say. And then he started actually having a girlfriend and, and how that affected our relationship um, and, and how, uh, it, it's just that 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 weird time in um, in in junior high when you're you're changing you're you're kind of straddling the line between becoming uh, from a little kid to to a teenager and you're starting to uh, you know you still believe in magic but you know the reality of of you're starting to see the reality of life especially in gym class. But, uh, you know, so that's. Yeah, so that's that's kind. Of, you know, Jim was like the Lord of the Rings, or I'm sorry, um, Lord of the Flies. Very at least in the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> at least in the seventies, it was. Um, but uh, but but that's kind of like what that is. It's it's, it's just a um, examination of, of 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 a boy relationship, and the the trials and tribulations. And there's a cryptid, which if you've read Lumberjanes, you know I love cryptids, the Jersey Devil. I do. I, I Yes. So, yes. So, well, I would love to be a cryptozoologist. <laughs> and, um, yes, and it's, you know, that's a, the funny thing. When I saw your Lumberjanes, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is like the same thing with the creatures and the monsters, which well, I love monsters. And yeah. in New Jersey, the big monster was the Jersey Devil. And people don't realize that was like our Bigfoot. And uh, that's kind of like the B plot that runs beneath underneath it. This is the thing that brings them all together, uh, and and the, and the the one thing that 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 they really loved uh, growing up these two characters, um, Andrew and Russ. Uh, but yeah, yeah, cryptozoology, which is the study of mythical creatures. It's uh, to write lumberjanes, we have to be kind of like uh, amateur cryptozoologists because every arc is like, all right. What's the monster? And you'll never this time. You'll never run out of material. Every yeah. state has like three <laughs> monsters, right? Yeah, absolutely. So they, fantastic. It, yeah. It's fantastic. Which one did I, 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 I read uh, um, uh, campfire songs. Yes. Campfire songs. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of good ones in there. Um, yes. What has it been like this year, like writing for kids and, and, um, 
you know, it, it, has it been sort of therapeutic to kind of immerse yourself in the, the fun and the funny of your respective inner worlds or has it been stressful? Like what, what has it been like for you? So, yeah, am I, are we meant to circle back around to me? Sure, why not? Let's do it. Yeah, let's go right back up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wrote Always Human long before 2020, um, and that was probably a good thing because, yeah, 2020 was really depressing and Always Human was very optimistic. I don't think I could have written it in 2020. I don't think I was in the right state of mind for that sort of hopefulness, but I probably needed it, so that was good. Um, yeah, it's just been a weird year. Um, hopefully, twenty twenty one occupy yeah. Wall Street. Or yeah. <laughs> what about you, Laura? Uh, I think I'm, I. I was reading Bud Boys for most of twenty twenty. So, uh, I agree with Ari. It's Bug Boys is kind of a project where I want it to have an optimistic spirit to it, even if it's about the parts of life that are kind of sad or boring or depressing or whatever. So it, it was therapeutic to like think of my safe little bubble where I control it. Yeah. Uh, and everyone gets to go home at the end of the day and have hot chocolate or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> lovely things happen at the end. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I'll say it, just having a project to work on, just in general, was incredible. The best thing to make it through. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, um, uh, you know, I, I, it was it was it was really hard to get started during uh, the, the first lockdown or when it started like in, in, in February and March. And I, I kept thinking I'm between, I was between books. And so I was supposed to be coming up with an idea at this point. And uh, uh, you know, I, the last time I pitched a book was in 2016 uh, in November, right after the election. And we all thought that Ooh. Hillary was gonna win. So that was like the worst week ever to send the book out to publishers. It took them a month and a half before they even looked at my thing. And I, I'm like, oh my God, here we go again. You know, now it's something even, even more, uh, even darker. I could not get anything going. I mean, I could show you my cell phone. I got a ton of starts, yeah. you know, good starts, which I think, but then I'm like, yeah, no, this is gonna suck. I know it's gonna suck. I'm just wasn't mentally there. And I do a comic strip, a daily comic strip too. Um, and at first, my my feeling was, well, I, I got to I got to ignore the pandemic because people are looking for escapism. But I couldn't. I just couldn't. So it became part of my comic strip and it helped me to deal with it a lot more to get the juices flowing because I, you can't ignore something that's happening to mm -hmm. everybody on the planet. You just and can't I pretend think, like it's not happening. Yeah. And I, I, think I just therapeutic to especially for for you for the syndic I, I was very interested to see how you all the syndicated cartoonists like engaged with it because everybody's been different it's really fascinating yeah well it seemed see, to me you know that that little shape that we were seeing on you know with the spiky ball to me right away that's a character that's a character right yeah. there <laughs> and, 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 and so I immediately gave that a personality that's in trying to get at us. It hates Dr. Fauci, you know, it, it, it's all, it, you know, so, um, makes crank calls to Dr. Fauci, you know, and, um, that's, it's, that helped me to get over the hump and start the juices flowing at first. Like I said, I was going to ignore it, but then I went past that and it, it, it really, really helped not well, ignoring it to, it to, feels to good to be a part of something right it had to be a part of the whole i think in in a way um what is like respectively what are your favorite parts of writing for kids and young adults in general okay is this back this is okay um yeah <laughs> um I guess just thinking about me as a kid and me as a teenager and then engaging with a kid or a like an actual real kid or teenager and just sort of thinking about how I would have interacted with that person now that they're 
sort of communicating with me via a story I wrote that I kind of wrote for younger me. And I don't know, just having that all meet up together and just going, oh, <laughs> that's so love, nice. I love that. Yeah. I have a like an embroidery on my office wall that says like, be who you needed when you were younger. Yeah. And I feel like it's good writing advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Laura, what about you? Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, what's your favorite part of writing for kids and, and like oh, right. people in general? Um, it's all right. We went we went places. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not going places right now. Um, my favorite part. I don't know. I just felt like when I got the idea for Bug Boys, and I knew immediately like what the tone and vibe was and that informed like who it was for it was for kids um i f immediately felt really free i felt like i was free to write whatever story i wanted and do it how i wanted and have the characters they could go to the moon they could go to the bottom of the ocean they could do anything for some reason when i am thinking of comics for adults i don't feel quite as free when i'm writing those mm -hmm. I feel like it's got to hit a certain beat that adult comic readers want. But when I'm writing for kids, I'm like, no, you guys, let's go to the bottom of the ocean. It's going to be great. <laughs> I love that. I, I often will be like, uh, when people will get like very into like the how and the why of something like going to the bottom of the ocean, I'm like, they don't, they don't care. Don't worry about it. Don't worry like, about that's it. That's not why they're reading the book. But just make it fun. Yeah. Yeah. Only when you go to pitch to Hollywood, they want to know why everything. No why? <laughs> why? How's it happen? Yeah. There is no why. There is no why. Just go it's with it. Fun. You? Come on. Yeah. Uh, you know, the thing is, when I write, I always write for myself now. Nice. Because I guess I'm 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 just I, I maybe I'm just immature or I, I actually I don't think I don't write down to kids. I write for what I think is funny for adults. It doesn't have to be super, um, y y uh, I, I just don't say, well, what would I like to r read when I was a kid? Because I didn't like to read when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, we were forced to read stuff and um, I like comics, you know, and, and that's what, to me, it was the, 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 you know, and the simpler the comics that were the better, um, it, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff I liked. But I mean, I wasn't totally into it, and but I, now I now I, I am, and I just I just I have to be excited about something when I open the page and start writing every page. I have to there has to be something that I'm looking forward to doing, whether it's the writing or the art. Usually, it's the art that excites me, and then the and the writing to me is is the icing on the cake. Um, and sometimes it's the opposite of that. Sometimes it's the opposite of that. You know, it, that you know it, it depends that kind of makes me like what was the comic when you were younger that kind of ignited you were like this is blowing my mind and i love this and i want to tell you what it was for me it was disney cartoons because i grew up with bugs bunny and fred flintstone and then i went to the movie theater and i saw a disney cartoon and these were they were definitely cartoons but they were solid characters mm -hmm. they were real they they jumped off the screen the artwork was amazing how did they do that in animation in in the 30s and 40s how did they do it you know and then you went into the the time period like when uh, 101 dalmatians came out and they completely shaped uh, changed up their their style but it was so evocative and, mm -hmm. and and the characters again were so real i cried at the end of every disney movie every time you know i cared about those characters now to me that told me what cartoons could be Mm -hmm. That they weren't just these like paper cutouts like Fred Flintstone, which you know that was entertaining, but it wasn't like this. This was something that was real, and you know you can write stories th that go on and on, um, and and that's what I loved about the Disney cartoon, and that's what I always wanted to do whenever I made cartoons. I want to hear Laura and Ari's comics or cartoons as well. Okay. Um, I, I don't actually remember if I got into web comics first or anime and manga first. So I'm, I'm really struggling to pick one. 
Um, in terms of web comics, I, I remember finding Red String and oh my gosh, uh, yeah. I, I, it's wild now because I get to talk. To, I talk like I, my heroes, so that I can interact. Anyway, um, yes. I remember Red String. I remember Zap. I remember <laughs> what was the one Sarah Ellerton worked on before Inverlock? Oh no, Inverlock was the first one. I think Inverlock was the first one. Was I remember that one very clearly. Um, and then on the Anime manga side, I remember getting into the Shonen Jump manga. Um, Naruto, I think, might have been one of the first I read. I remember Fruits Basket very clearly. That um, that stayed with me for a long time. Um, clamps, everything clamp. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so when I was a kid, Card Captor Sakura, I don't remember which I would have read first, but those, those were all very formative for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'll say. As a younger child, Calvin and Hobbes. And then when I was 11, I read Card Capture Sakura by Clamp. And that was the moment I was like, I have to do this or I'm going to die. I love like, that. I have, to, I have to chase the feeling I get when I read this book forever. I love that. I, that's like one of my favorite questions to ask people because it is an extremely visceral and like it is it is body when people answer that question it is in it is in their guts that they're answering that question um I, I mean do you have any advice for kids who have you know watched that cartoon read that comic and are like oh my god i have to do this do you have any advice for kind of aspiring cartoonists um, start a web comic yeah <laughs> start a web comic <laughs> It's not a short web comic, like okay, 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 a short one, a short one. No, like I, I started a web comic at like thirteen, and it was going to be like a thousand pages, and then it stopped after like sixteen pages, and I never see the light of day. But <laughs> that was a good experience. I um I always when I'm talking to to kids I always give them I don't remember where I got this advice um, I'm sure from a number of people but the um, try to to do to not necessarily do a project that isn't twice as long as a project that you finished so if you've done a two page comic then try to do a four page comic and if you've done a four page comic try to do an eight page comic and like you're kind of leveling up to get doing these longer form things because it feels really good to finish something. Um, yeah. yeah, it does. It does. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and I think a lot, I, I, I talk to a lot of kids that are like, like you said, like they give me these like dragon sagas that are a thousand pages long and I'm like, yes, but also it's really good to do like a one page strip. <laughs> And have it have it kill. <laughs> yeah, self editing self editing is really 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 important. You always you know bring it you know uh, it's that's that's something that comes later though. I I listen if you can get up and, and you can write and draw every day, you're just going to get better at it. <laughs> it's at the end of the, I you know I was I always told my daughters you know yeah, I just keep a, a book by your bed and when you wake up start writing and it doesn't matter what you're writing because you're unloading you're basically unloading getting all that stuff out all the all the garbage and it could just be stream of consciousness but out of that comes form and um I, that I I mean I, I I write all the time I write every day I draw every day I mean I draw because because I have to draw every day. Uh, I don't do a lot of sketching uh, be because um, I, I do a daily comic strip and 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 Sunday. So there, there's always artwork happening. But uh, the writing is the really the key thing. That, that's the thing that really makes you uh, who you are. I love that. I love that. Um, I'm gonna jump on kind of audience questions in a second. If you, any of you have a question, uh, please click on the ask a question thing. There's no question too small. There's no question too weird. You've got us for another half hour. Yeah. So ask us, uh, ask us a question about comics, about animation, about uh, our books. Ask, ask questions. Um, but before I jump on those questions, um, is there a, a book that you've read recently that you would love to recommend to everybody? Uh, it can be comics, 
uh, or not. But uh, do, do you have a book that you uh, would love to recommend? It doesn't even have to be a recent book. It can just be a, a book that if you are at this panel, you probably enjoy. Okay. Um, I recently got a copy of the print volume one of the webcomic Sleepless Domain. Mm. It's mostly kids friendly, right? I mean, it, it gets a bit, it's teen friendly, definitely. I don't know how they officially made it, but it's very good. It's very young, good. I would say it's YA, like young it's adult. It's YA, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's a webcomic, so you can go read it right now by Googling Sleepless Domain. And it's just... Great characters, really interesting sort of magic, law, history, um, really emotionally lingers, like it punches you and then just sort of digs around in your heart and then just sort of stays there and it's it's brilliant. Um, yeah, highly recommend it. I love it. Okay, I've got, I've got um, so I really like this fantasy author, Patricia McKillop. Um, She's written like a million, like teen-ish fantasy books, and they're Can you all. Can hold that cover up again? Sorry, uh, a this is. Cover. I described this one as an example. It's the Tower at Stony Wood, but <laughs> she's written like five thousand of these. They're all the same length. They're all kind of have the same plot, and they all kind of have like the same themes. And I just, they're delicious. Um, they're potato chips for me. Um, but what I love about them is they're kind of like, they hit like the same notes as like a really good shoujo manga. Like a really it. classic yeah. one. Like there's some, like most of these were written before Sailor Moon, but there's some like weird Sailor Moon feelings happening. Um, love that. And then a comic I've really been enjoying the last couple of years is Delicious in Dungeon by Ryoko Kui. It's so this good. Is like, uh, I would also say this is appropriate for teens rather than kids, mm -hmm. but this is like world-shaking fantasy writing right here. <laughs> it's like, this is beyond potato chips. This is like meat and potatoes, like you could eat it for dinner every day. It's so good. <laughs> so good. I, yeah. it, it drives me insane that we don't have, as a country, a, a rich food comics culture the way that Japan I know. <laughs> There's so many good ones. Anyway, yeah. Mark, what about you? <laughs> um, I like, um, uh, I love children's books. It, um, I love um, children's picture books. And I loved um, The Day the Crayons Quit. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that one. It's great. It's great. Um, uh, as far as graphic novels, anything by Adrian Tomin. I don't know if you guys seen Death that uh, it's great. And his scrapbook is, st it, I, you could still get that. I mean, that's one of those books where I keep losing it because I'm always referring to it. And so I bought it three times because I keep thinking I lost it and I find it, so I have like three copies of it. <laughs> but I, Adrian Tomin to me is just amazing. He's yeah. just the end of the I don't know how he does it. It's just very simple lines and his, his, it, and, and his writing is very clean. And, and uh, that's the kind of stuff I would have liked as a kid because it's, um, it's just, it's just very easy on the eyes and it's not intimidating, like a lot of words and stuff. It's great, great stuff. I love that. Great wreck. Wait, wait, I, I also, yeah, one more, one more. Uh, um, this one summer is great too. <sighs> So good. Oh, so good. Excellent. Yeah. Um, awesome. All right. We're going to get to some, some audience questions. We have a few questions from um, Mysterious Galaxy, but and we'll jump on those in a minute. But I'm going to start with kind of the audience questions first. Uh, we have a question from Andy. Uh, Andy just graduated college and wants to go into publishing for kids. How should I spend my time now? How, should I, how do I get started doing something I enjoy? Let's see. <clears throat> uh, if they want to be an author, I think they should write or make as much as whatever thing you want to make. If you want to make comics, if you want to write fiction, if you want to write nonfiction, just start making it. Make, make like a small enough project that you can finish on your own in a couple months and then publish it somewhere. And 
email people, tweet, et cetera, and then do it again. Um, if they sure. want to work in like editorial, I guess like that you're just, just gonna cold in. emailing folks. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunate. You're you're just gonna fall backwards into that. Uh, yeah, I got into editorial. If you're interested in editorial, I studied comics writing alongside regular writing, and then I just uh, searched for my first comics editing job. I was a copy editor at Tokyo Pop, so. You never know how you're going to get in to comics. Uh, it was, we all got laid off after less than a year. So it's fine. <laughs> exactly what you expect. Uh, but, you know, if, if, okay, so Andy is interested in writing and also editorial work. Um, but yeah, editing, study writing, that's the best thing you can do in the world. <laughs> um, make something that's fun. Um, everyone, Crystal wants to know, what is your process for creating and fleshing out characters and the relationships between them? I would love to hear every, if everybody wants to answer this one, I would love to hear how everybody's process is sort of different. Okay. Um, for me, characters are about flaws and passions. Um, one of each or possibly just one and it's the same thing. Um, but everything everything builds out from that and then relationships ideally conflicting flaws and passions or perhaps flaws and passions that together make even worse flaws um just characters who make bad decisions is for me the core of storytelling and so i just i need to know why my characters are making their bad decisions and i need to know what them doing together will do to make them make bad decisions. And so I, just, I can just arbitrarily pick a flaw. The flaw is stubbornness. The flaw is laziness. The flaw is perfection to be the opposite of laziness. And like anything can be a flaw if it becomes strong enough. And I just pick it and then I pick a passion that, you know, the flaw is perfection. The passion is wanting to be an author. And the problem is that you never complete anything because you want your drafts to be perfect and then story. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm done. It's my process. Uh, what is my process? Good question. I, I guess I'm more of a story driven writer where the characters end up kind of uh, doing the things I need them to do to get them to reach certain beats that I'm interested in getting to. Um, my process is mostly to draw pictures I like and then think of ways to link all the pictures I like together. I love that. <laughs> and then as I'm getting from point A to B to C, I'll think of new stuff and then I'll need to go back and in integrate it and then eventually, hopefully, it leaves a little better than one, two, three, you know? Yeah, I think uh, um, the, uh, the characters, uh, once you have a character, um, you know, you just, uh, I, I, usually the way I work is like, well, I, I want to create a situation and then I, I want to uh, immer immerse this character into the situation and see what that character does. So I think that the, the strongest characters will actually start to tell you what they're going to do because of their, like you said, they're flawed. They're all flaws are always what makes your character great. You're gonna make mistakes, and and that's how it creates situations. And and then they have to get out of the situation. Uh, but I, I I like to create characters that literally will start to tell me what they're going to do, and I just gotta be listening. And and I, I know that that sounds weird, but it's it's just kind of like how how it, it usually starts in my head and and, and with a, a storyline and then the character starts to emerge and then I have to start to draw that character and then that character will start to tell me what they're going to do. Depending yeah, honestly, on the role. That, that's exactly it for me too. The Once yeah. the character's settled, why are you doing that? What are you doing? I don't want you to do that. I don't want to draw yeah. that. Uh, that's see, that's the key too. You got to always be surprising yourself. You may write, yeah. uh, you may write an outline. I think you know publishers always want an outline. It's like the biggest joke because I know I'm never going to stick to that. 
because I, I already know what that outline is, right? So if I'm writing and following an outline, it's like, well, I'm not surprising myself, so I don't care anymore. So I have to keep, I mean, I'll keep some of the structure there, but I, I want to create things that I'm surprising myself that I didn't see coming, and that's what makes it interesting to me. Just, just give the publishers what they want and then ignore it all. Yeah, but you get, that but, you know, that's, that's kind of like how it works. Yeah. Using my comrades. <laughs> oh my God, I'm destroying my career right now. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I love, I love spontaneity in all things. So uh, I enjoy messing around with with outlines once they're locked. What's what's locked about an outline? Who knows. Um, nothing. Nothing. That's I right. I hate writing outlines. I hate writing outlines. It's, it's the worst. It's difficult too because everything sounds so dry. Everything's so right. dry in an outline. It's terrible. It's an awful. And it just thing. feels generic after a while. It's like, oh, okay, beginning, middle, end, right? That's all. It's those three parts. <laughs> you got to fill that all in. And the middle always sucks. You know, it, it's <laughs> we gotta, how are we going to get to this big, this big end scene I have? That's you know, like, you have, to, something in the middle here. you have to end it with like a question. Like, but how will they get out of this scrape? <laughs> right. <now. laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> from Bob, what, a, what do y'all do when you're stuck to jumpstart new ideas? Oh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't ever get stuck. I, I never have. I, it, it flows right out of me. I don't ever hit a wall. <laughs> Next subject. I don't, say I don't get stuck, but like back to the characters doing what they want. Like sometimes I get stuck because the characters do what they want, but I not having enough ideas. Rather, it's like, oh, that idea seems so much more pleasant than the one I'm currently working on. I should just 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 a few hours. It'll be okay. <laughs> Right. Um, focusing on one idea and getting that idea going somewhere is, for me, the struggle rather than getting distracted or running into the problem where, yeah, the character's doing something I didn't expect them to do and now I'm not quite sure what's coming next. And a nice shower is relaxing and gets ideas flowing, um, like food and drink and and nature when we're allowed outside again um i don't know i don't really have a strategy for for that just eventually you just keep at it i recognize that's a very unhelpful thing to say but eventually something <laughs> happens usually and if it doesn't there's probably a reason why my brain's refusing to cooperate and maybe i need to try something else or put something aside or come out of it in a completely different direction I don't know. yeah yeah, when, when I'm stuck, that means it's time to quit for the day or eat lunch or take a walk. Uh, yeah, if I just sit at my desk and, like, pretend to work, I'm just going to feel worse, so. Yeah, staring at a blank page is just going to make a blank. Yeah. <laughs> I like to go to the grocery store. I mean, the best thing is walking down the cereal section. How could you not come up with ideas with all that explosion of weird characters and sugary cereals you know it's just insane you know so that that i like the i like the grocery store i, I honestly there's so much to look at uh i have a little notebook that i call shannon raps exclamation <laughs> point and it's full of bad ideas and i literally just like word almost word associate in it for however long so you get stuff that's like gay dinosaur dads or like like just terrible ideas of all sorts but the nice thing is that sometimes there's a good idea or there's something that makes you laugh or something that makes your your brain feel feel nice and uh it's it just it sometimes it feels good to just to just put words down even if it's nonsense um, That's what I was talking about, the shrewd conscious writing. That that works. That it works. works. It works. It, 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 works. It, it, it gets the junk out of the way. And like you said, you, you I mean, like you said, a gay dinosaur. That's a great idea right there. I, I like that. I, I think I can run with it. It's that. in the notebook, I'm afraid. 
I did. <laughs> that is a 100% real example from the notebook. I like it. I think that's great. Uh, it's, it's very, it's, it's definitely there. So, you know, it really, you have, you have to stop kind of being self-conscious about it. Don't, don't be self-conscious about being stuck or about ideas in general. Uh, there really is no bad ideas. <laughs> yeah. Um, give, give yourself permission to make something that's bad. Oh yeah. yeah. I got bad. a lot of bad ideas. Like on myself. Just, just uh, make it even if it's bad. Like what's the worst that's going to happen? Like no one's going to remember it in a year. Who cares? Just make it. <laughs> this actually ties into Crystal's next question, which is how do you keep from being discouraged? And I think that that's, kind of what we're talking about is exactly that you the, it's okay to make stuff that's bad you don't even have to show anybody you can just show yourself yeah um, kate beaton who is an acclaimed cartoonist and like the funniest cartoonist out there making comics she is incredibly funny and she got started doing stick figure comics on live journal like that literally for years back in the day in the ancient times when web cartoonists were posting mainly on live journal, Kate Beaton was cartooning with st stick figures. Um, it's like, it teaches you how to do it. They were so funny, those stick figures. <laughs> she wrote, uh, she wrote two really good children's books too. She did. That I, I love. Um, I, I have the one about the, the little, the little girl, the Viking girl that wants to have, to have a horse. Yeah. It's a pony. Yeah. It's awesome. Awesome book. Kiss and the Pony, and then King Baby, I think is her other one. Yes, King Baby. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read that one yet. King Baby is a love great, great one to give uh, somebody who's about to have a little brother or sister. I don't know. I have two children's picture books. I just give those. <laughs> I love it. Um, so that. Yeah, go ahead. I, I used to think I wanted to be a prose writer and I started like 20 prose novels and I'd get to the end of chapter two and I'm like, no, this is the worst thing I've ever seen ever and I don't know where those documents are anymore. Um, but I never got very far into anything because I thought they were all terrible. Um, I think part of this might be that I am much more in tune with visual storytelling and maybe pose was never going to work for me maybe pose will work for me one day i have no idea but i think back to the idea of starting with something small that you can complete and you can point to it and go that's done always here was actually meant to be a much smaller story which is why i think i got through it because i thought it was going to be short and it would be complete and i would be so happy and then it became bigger but it still got completed so that was nice um but i think having something complete that you can point to and go i can finish a thing and here it is and it's done and even if no one else sees it even if i'm the only person who see it who sees it i know i can do it and then building onto something bigger so, so, um when i was attempting to be a prose author i did get some I also did short stories, not because I necessarily was passionate about short stories, but because I wanted that sense of completion. And I actually got a few, like, published even, and that was very cool. You won't find it under Ari North, that's a pseudonym. But um, <laughs> I actually got, like, some small short stories published by small presses, and that was really, really exciting. And it was just, yeah, Always Human was meant to be, like, a 30-page one-shot, and then it just sort of well-building characters, flaws, took over. Whoops, how did that happen? Um... But yes, starting with something small that you can complete, and even if it expands, it'll still be completable because you weren't planning for like a thousand page epic that turned into a 20,000 page epic. And then just you have it and it exists and it's real and there's really nothing more motivating than that. And that really does a lot to stop me from getting discouraged knowing that I can do it because, hey, well, that's one thing that exists and that's cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Just let it be bad. <laughs> yeah, let, it also, bad. let it be bad. And also if making a comic or make or your short story or whatever is feeling really painful, think about what part of the process is the most fun. What gives you pleasure? And you need to do that the most. Or, you know, you, you can't get around doing all the other stuff, but do that part first. Like, if just coming up with the ideas is the fun part, just write your story in, like, bullet points. If just drawing is the fun part, just just do the drawings. Don't worry about it being a story that makes sense. And then 
once you're kind of getting on a roll with the stuff that's fun, then start incorporating the painful bits. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what you, I, I don't know what you mean by discouraging, uh, you know, rejection is discouraging and that's going to happen. Um, you know, don't knock discouragement. Um, I, I, I think, uh, I think greatness comes out of, of being discouraged. Uh, I think, uh, it, it, it forces you to, uh, if you're not going to give up, then it forces you to, to constantly be, trying to get better. If you're discouraged, it means you're not happy with what you're doing. That means you're trying to get better. So it's a good thing. And, and, yeah. and uh, I, 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 rejection um, from, uh, it, you know, other, or from publishers or from people that are reading it, um, your family will always love what you do. Well, most of your family will. But, um, you know, when you're showing outside people and they then they start to say terrible things, that can be discouraging. Certainly rejection is discouraging from publishers and so forth. Uh, but if you can learn from that, you're going to get better. So I, 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 I think a discouraging, being discouraged is actually a good thing because you want to be better. You're, you, and, and so you're going to research. It means looking at other artists' work. It means uh, finding your own voice. And um, that's, um, I, 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 think, I think depression and sadness is a good thing. Just to follow on from that, there's this quote, I don't know who said it, and I don't know if it was about art block or writing block, but the basic idea is that your sense of taste develops faster than your ability to create the things you want to create. And if you are struggling in creating, it just means that your sense of taste is so good that you just can't create something good enough for it yet. But that's great because it means right, you have to catch up with yourself. Yeah, it means you've got the sense of taste. I like that. You know, I like amazing. That. You just, as you keep on practicing, you'll get better and better to yeah. what you hope it will be. And, and, right, and, yeah. and 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 the reality is, we never get there. That's that's the, yeah. the brass ring. You'll yeah. never get it. You'll never yeah. be as great as I'll never be as great as Adrian Tomine. That's who I really want to be. You know, I wanted to be Walt Disney. I'll never be Walt Disney, but I'm still striving for it. Still, still, still trying to get better every time I do something. I want yeah. that to be a little bit better in a different way or whatever. I'm always learning and never stop learning. So. Um, yeah, discouragement, it's, it comes with the, the territory. It really does. And it yeah. feels good to get kind of okay at something when you're bad at it, just by virtue of doing the thing. You look yeah. up one day and you're like, oh, man, now I know how to draw a foot. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you know how to draw a foot? I still don't know how to draw a foot. I love to draw feet. It's my favorite thing to draw, which is weird, very, very odd. Like it's, it's like, I just, when I was, when I was like a teenager and like cartooning regularly, which I do not do anymore. Um, as a, as an editor, you don't have a lot of opportunity for that outside of for fun. Uh, and I, I really struggled to draw feet and shoes. Yeah. And so I feet are really hard. Feet, feet and are really hard. All the time. And now I've tricked myself because I, uh, enjoy drawing feet. I don't like particularly enjoy feet in any other capacity, but I like to draw them. They're very fun. Uh, anyway, it's, yeah, because it's feet fun. that are feet that are drawn wrong are really distracting. So you want to get that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I had a friend in high school who was terrible at drawing feet. Like he would draw sneakers the same way, and it for some reason really bothered me. He was in anime club with me, um, and I'd be like, "Ah, oh, <clears throat> terrible at drawing yeah. sneakers." Now you can't. Yeah, now you can't look at anything else, right? Yeah, that's all you can see. But you see it. Those terrible feet. How do we get here? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Andy, Andy, would like to know what is your favorite part of creating graphic novels? That's such a big question. I know it's huge. <laughs> Andy says, "Sorry, don't be sorry." <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has to think deeply. Uh, I've got, I've got That's an answer. My favorite part of writing right. novel. Yeah. Yeah, getting here. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Um, because because there's so many parts of it. You know, there's the outline, then there's the script, then there's the 
pencils, and then there's the inking, then the coloring, then it's the changes, and it's like by the time you get done, you're so sick of it, you're ready to move on to the next thing. Or, or if you're not already thinking about the next thing, there's a real problem. But yeah, I the end. I will write the end at the ever end and the end of every book because I have to have that period. You know, I know that this torture is now over. Okay, um, I find thumbnailing very satisfying because it's the first point at which a story that's either only in text or in my head is in front of me in a way that's visual storytelling like all the important bones as it were are there and so thumbnail is very satisfying when it finally it kills me too when it finally works um thumbnail is very satisfying but it's like a lot of pain but it, it eventually gets there usually um and i also just love coloring because i love color and color is usually very close to the end so that's almost the end and that's just very satisfying um so i guess beginning bones and end sort of shine are both my favorite parts i guess what about you laura uh, i like drawing it awesome <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, i recently finished inking the the boys i'm working on now and it was like just day after day of like grinding on it and i was like wait this is the part i like the best like, <laughs> Like everything I did to get to this point was so I could spend like these months doing this. I love that. And I was like, good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. I <laughs> did it. We are. I mean, I always, I always look forward to writing, and I always look forward to the, to the inking. It's always terrible when I'm doing it, but afterwards, I'm nostalgic about it. Oh, oh yeah, it was fun drawing that. You know, but while it's happening, it's just horrible. Inking is suffering, yeah. <laughs> it's suffering. It, it, like, it feels good because I'm like, I'm using my skills, I'm solving problems on the page, I'm thinking, I'm referring to, I'm like in my mind palace, there's like the equations floating in the air, like it's, that's great. Like it's all happening, but I'm also like sweating and crying and I need to have a treat every couple hours or I can't go on and I need, oh, I need another coffee. I need another glass of water. <laughs> I think yeah. we probably have time for one more question. Um, so I'm going to do uh, that. Crystal had a quick one. This is a uh, quick one for Ari, which was, that will the always human mini comics ever be available again? Oh, the ones that were done as pre-order bonuses? Yes, um, yes. My understanding is that pre-order bonuses usually are made public at some point. And uh, I mean, there's no official news on book two, but I hope that if there is official news at book two, I will release them then as a celebrate, I don't know exactly, but yeah, they'll definitely make their way online for everyone to read at some point. Yeah. Perfect. All right. This is the real last question, but I wanted to make sure that you got the chance to answer that one. Um, uh, okay. When do you feel like, this is like a huge question. This is maybe too huge for, for an end question. When <laughs> it's like, when did you truly come into your distinctive style? And that's like, whew, that's a huge question. Um, so I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna ask one more question from me, uh, which is, I guess, do you have uh, any closing remarks? Is there anything you'd like to add? Anything you've talked about tonight as far as like to aspiring creators or to readers in general? Uh, and it can be as simple as keep your chin up. Web comics are very cool. You should read them or make them or both. But I think ultimately create stories. Stories are what lift us up. So you know that web comics are cool. Yeah. I love it. I know that was yeah, too I big. Yeah, I agree. Story, uh, story, <laughs> uh, stories and pictures. 
and pictures and cartoons and and it, there and you know what it excites me is there's always this new way of telling a story you know Raina telgemeier just came, you know out of came out of nowhere telling a, a story about her her own life in cartoons and who would ever thought that that would be something that kids would want that's why you can't sit around and think about what kids will want you got to write what comes out of your heart uh, um, you got to be honest with, you know just write honestly and 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 to me I, I this is why I love graphic novels for kids um, when I watch a, a when I watch a um, a foreign movie uh, it, and and it's it's not translated because the only way to watch a foreign movies not translated you have to read the text at the bottom almost like a libretto I find that I'm so much more engaged in the movie when I'm I'm hearing how the actor's talking, I'm seeing what's happening, and I'm reading what what's being said. I'm so pulled in. You can't go on your cell phone. You can't go take a drink or go to the bathroom when that's happening. You gotta stay with it. That's what a graphic novel to me is so immersive. You're getting the text, you're reading it, and you're seeing the pictures, you're seeing what's happening, you're feeling the emotions. That's why I love graphic novels. I, it's completely immersive. I love that. Uh, yeah. I also want to say you should make her read comics. <laughs> um, yeah, just to repeat myself, it's okay if it's bad. Like, one of the founding principles of Bug Boys when I decided to start making it was it's okay if I make one that's bad. Like, I can just forget about it and make another one later. That's I know that's not, it's not going to be bad. It's called Bug Boys. You you got me interested <laughs> right away. I know. It's, like the title. it's nice and simple. And it's like, I know what I'm getting right away. And I know this is going to be fun. It's like a perfect. Uh, thank you. I spent literally less than a single second thinking of it. I was like, what's. That's where the best that is. That's that I like. I like that one. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's great. I love it. Um, can I chime in with just one quick admin thing? Yeah, of course. Um, I just I just want to let people know. Um, I sent off signed stuff to Mysterious Galaxy Books a while ago, and American Customs sent it back to me. Um, and then I sent it off again. So just to let anybody who's ordered from Mysterious Galaxy know, it might take longer than you're expecting because they're probably still waiting for my second thing. I probably I, yeah, but you should get it. Yeah. Sorry. We we are. I had your publicist reach out and I was like, I was dumbfounded because I was like, I don't know why that was done or the mail system right now. In particular, it has never been necessarily a straightforward thing. And I feel like now. Yeah, there, there's no urgency with, with ordering from Mysterious Galaxy as far as I know. Just letting you know that if you place an order today, they probably can't send it out today because they're probably still waiting on my second parcel. Yeah. And Which I sent as multiple so envelopes because we think the postal system will accept it back. And we'll send the books out too so you can still read it as soon as you. Well, almost as soon as you order it, and then we can send the book plate as a follow-up. But this was such an absolute pleasure. Thank you, like, thank you just so much for sharing so much about your experience and your journeys as artists and writers. It, like, took me back because I was, like, uh, Tenchi Muyo used to be, like, one of my oh, favorites yeah. back in the day. I was, like, yeah. I have a lot of yeah. Yoko Space Pirate, like, trying to really get the hair right oh. in sketchbooks. Ryoko. Mm. Yeah. Right. Right. Ryoko was the best one. No matter what telling you it was, also the movie they made, not gonna lie, made my heart like cry for her. Um, but anyways, I digress. But it just this event has been so much fun. And thank you guys so much for sharing your stories with us. And also too for sharing such inspiring like thoughts and everything for all of the others artists and writers out there. Um I love that. Go and write your story and put it out there. I think that is a very beautiful message. So on that very positive and happy note, I'm going to say thank you so much to all of our artists slash authors. And thank you so much to all of the amazing readers who joined us tonight. Don't forget, if you would like to purchase these awesome, awesome, awesome books, there will be the link down below for you. And we will see all of you next time. Have a
I almost said had a great event. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.